What's up everybody today? I want to do more of an instructional video than I usually do. This is not going to be necessarily a tutorial, but because I just pushed a video uh, talking about how great NetBird is and how much I love NetBird and which is really just based on the same way that Tailscale does things. It's a mesh VPN. I'm getting a lot of questions about should I switch and what should I use here? Or does this mean I don't need that? And I realized that I really didn't talk a lot about the way that I have my networking set up. So today I'm going to go through and walk you through the ways that I get to my network and out of my network and the way I have all my networking done, uh, I'm going to walk you through this quick little slide deck that shows you the differences between how I get from outside the internet to my actual TrueNAS box. So this is my actual TrueNAS box. You'll see here I have some stuff installed and I've also got Dockage running on this host. So this is my actual dockage page and you can see here 50 active, one exited and three inactive. I've got quite a lot of containers and all these containers can be reached in different ways depending on what they are and what they need. So I'm going to start by showing you the most basic thing here. Uh, a lot of people know that over here if you look I'm running MB uh, and this is my MB instance. Now I, I'm going to use this example for Jellyfin but really any media streaming platform is kind of unique because media streaming is challenging. The problem with media streaming is I can't use my basic things like Cloudflare tunnels, and I don't want to use my private VPN to stream media because I want that to be available to other people without having to install like NetBird or Tailscale on their TV, which is not very straightforward or sometimes even impossible to do. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what media streaming looks like. So this is me in my fancy little diagram. I know it's not very high speed, but just go with me here. Uh, so I start from wherever I am in the world, and I go through an unproxied Cloudflare CNAME DNS entry. This is a long string of words to basically describe the fact that I have a domain on Cloudflare. You guys already know that server's at home. Uh, and I have a subdomain under that, which is what a CNAME is. Uh, and it's unproxied, which means that Cloudflare is pretty much just taking all the traffic that goes to the CNAME, like for example, mb.servers at home, and is pointing it towards my router's public IP. It's not actually going through the Cloudflare network. Cloudflare is just pretty much turning that uh, fully qualified domain name into the IP of my router. Now, I don't actually have a static IP, so what I didn't show here is the fact that I'm using uh, in my dockage. There's so I'm using a Cloudflare DDNS updater, uh, which you can see right here, and that's gonna go ahead and update my network address to make sure that in the event that my public IP changes, Cloudflare is updated and this and this little, this little part of the path doesn't get broken because what could happen is if my router's public IP changes because it is on it is a dynamic IP address, this unproxied entry is not gonna work anymore. So I have, a, I have another little step in here that's not being shown, but the good news is my router's IP is never going to be lost to Cloudflare because I have a DDNS updater. So if I'm on the internet, I go to I type in my fully qualified domain name mb.servers at home, which takes me then to my my router's public IP. From there, I have a port forward on 80 and 443, the nginx reverse proxy manager, and that should be running in here. I have it running right here npm this is my npm container and that's catching everything that's coming in on 80 and 443 and from there i have a proxy host set up in uh, nginx reverse proxy manager uh, and that's going to my, in my case mb but i just put jellyfin in here for you guys because that's probably what you're using so this is kind of a long chain this is the most complicated part of my network because it takes all these little steps to make sure that media streaming works mainly because I can't use a simple Cloudflare tunnel or a proxy entry. So now I have to go through my router and then port forward and then have something catch that port forward on the inside and then actually port forward that to where it's supposed to go. Uh, so th this is just a bunch of complicated things to do something very simple like stream media, simply because streaming media puts so much trust in the Cloudflare network. It's against their terms of service. And I know tons of people are like, oh, you can get away with it. I'm not taking that risk. I'd rather just do this. It really isn't act that hard to set up. I just do a port forward on my router. I have this set up and set up a proxy host to Jellyfin. That's pretty much it. Um, it's not very much complicated because I'm already using Cloudflare for so many things. It's really just these few pieces here that I have to build in because everything before that is already built up. But that's how I go about media streaming. I'm going to show you how much easier this becomes for publicly accessible services. So say, for example, you guys are looking at the wiki. The wiki is running on my TrueNOS machine, uh, and I don't use this whole complicated port forwarding thing here. I use a Cloudflare tunnel. So the Cloudflare tunnel is really cool. There's an endpoint, basically uh, an app running on my server uh, in Dockage for my Cloudflare tunnel. I think I just call it tunnel in here. Yep, there it is right there. There's my tunnel. So this is just an endpoint Docker container. And you guys can see this on the wiki if you want to see the Docker Compose for that. Uh, and it just sits running in my dockage. And within the Cloudflare web interface for my zero trust network, I just basically define a, sub, uh, a subdomain wiki, in this case, dot servers at home. Uh, and that gets pointed to my internal IP address. So this the connector on dockage 
uh, is going to basically just sit there and I manage all of these connections through the interface on cloudflare.com. So on cloudflare.com, I define that 1099.0.200 colon 3000 is where wiki.js sits. And this is where I want this fully qualified domain name to resolve to through the connector running on TrueNest. So you see how simple that is because now I don't have the whole router infrastructure to go through and I don't have to worry about external IPs and dynamic DNS updaters and things like that. The tunnel will always tell Cloudflare where the tunnel lives. Doesn't matter what my IP address is, doesn't matter where I, and it doesn't matter about anything. Cloudflare tunnels will always be able to reach Cloudflare as long as there's outbound traffic allowed. So all I have to do is define my subdomain and then where that subdomain should terminate, in this case, Wiki.js. And that's it. That's as complicated as it gets. So I use Cloudflare tunnels for all of my publicly accessible services. Anything you guys go to in the servers at home universe and some other things I use for other people are all going through Cloudflare tunnels. Now, this is a little bit different than what I want to do in terms of private VPNs. This is a private VPN using something like Netbird. So for, for example, there are things I don't want anyone to be able to get to besides me. I don't want them on the internet at all. So in this case, my 1099 network, which is my home network, this sits behind Netbird. So Netbird is doing the same thing as um, basically the Cloudflare tunnel is. So this is my Netbird right here. And you can see here it's running on my TrueNAS host in Docker. And that's basically creating an endpoint uh, for Netbird. So on Netbird, they, I have the option to go netbird.io, and I have, then I can see the control plane and see my whole dashboard and set up my ACLs and my endpoints and my routing. But basically, I've told Netbird through the dashboard, but I've shown that video on the Netbird that, uh, video that I just did, that I want the peer, which in this case is TrueNOS, to be pushing this route. So now anytime I connect to Netbird on my phone or on my laptop or any mobile device outside my home, uh, I can now get to anything that's 10.99.0.0 through the connector that lives on TrueNAS. And again, because this is a really cool technology, you'll notice you don't see my router infrastructure in here. You don't see my IP addresses, nothing. This is totally private, totally special to me. Uh, it only exists for me and the people that I invite in and the connectors that I run. And it works really, really well. And I'm absolutely in love with it. But since putting up the video, people have been asking me, should I be replacing things with Netbird? And I'm like, well, it depends. If you want to do media streaming and you want it to be publicly available to everybody, no, you should do something like this. Um, if you want to take a risk with a Cloudflare tunnel or a, a proxy Cloudflare network, that, that's on you. But this is the way I do it. Um, my publicly accessible stuff obviously will never go through my private VPN, but then I also get the question about downloads. So this is what QubitTorrent is doing. The QubitTorrent right now living on my Docker Compose stack uh, is going through Air VPN uh, and then getting out to the internet. And this is a totally different type of VPN than uh, Netbird. Netbird is for getting me back into my home. Air VPN is for getting Qubit out to the main internet through a different hop so that when everything gets to the main internet, Air VPN is masking the original source of this traffic, which is the idea. Of course, there's a kill switch here and there's other things going on, but that wg0.conf file that I keep telling you guys you need to get from Air VPN or your VPN provider, this is pretty much just the key that tells Qubit how to go out to reach the Air VPN servers, which will then bounce your traffic out to the internet and then it all comes back in the same way. So this is very, very different. You would not want to run Qubit through a tunnel or through Tailscale or through Netbird or anything like that. This needs a totally different type of VPN to get out. Uh, but I just hope this was informative for you guys because I've been getting at so many questions and I want to just do a quick video on understanding the different types of VPNs, different types of ways to getting into your home network and some different containers that you can run uh, in order to get these things working. So I hope this slide deck, even though it was, you know, not super, you know, <laughs> not very, very fancy, uh, was just a good explanation for you guys from pretty basic things so you can understand how this works. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you want to ask me something very specific, please ask me on Discord where I can properly respond to you. If you want to say thank you, please buy me a coffee.